This episode of Film Jobs is made possible in part by the generous support of our patrons on Patreon. Hi, John Hess from FilmmakerIQ.com. Welcome to this episode of Film Jobs, a series of interviews we have with people working in a variety of positions in the motion picture entertainment industry. I hope through these conversations you get a taste of the multitude of positions and jobs available in film and television. My guests tonight will be Anita Kalathara and Wolfie Troush of Loop Group West. We'll discuss what exactly is Loop Group or Group ADR. How does a Loop Group session work? What are the different kinds of work that is required from a Loop Group? And how you can get involved in the field of Group ADR. So now, uh, probably a lot of my viewers don't know what, what is a Loop Group. So a Loop Group uh, or Group ADR, we're responsible for all the vocals that aren't recorded on set. Yep. Um, because so, while you're filming, the background needs to be silent. Mm -hmm. So we have to catch yeah. all those things that weren't covered. <laughs> a good example would be like if you're watching a hospital scene, uh, the principals are obviously mic'd. Um, mm -hmm. But in the background, you have doctors talking and patients talking. Or maybe people in the waiting room. Yeah, maybe somebody on the PA is speaking. All of that isn't recorded um, on set. So we're responsible to come onto a soundstage and record little tracks um, that can be synced into the scene. How does a loop group session work then? Um, so generally a production company will give us a certain number of contracts that we can use for a session. And um, they'll give us about six usually. Sometimes it can be four if it's a smaller budget or a dozen or so if it's a bigger budget. Mm -hmm. And then we're able to bring some of those actors in into a soundstage and have them kind of fill in for all the missing voices. So if you're in like a, a big room, then like a, like yeah. a stage, right? Yeah. right? So we'll either go to a post-production house or we'll go to mm -hmm. um, the studio's ADR stage. Mm -hmm. And we'll start with, we'll have the cue sheet and then we'll yeah. hire actors that fit for the project. Um, we'll all assemble onto the sound stage. And then one of us will be up in, on the, in the front of the stage directing the session and calling actors up. Um, and we'll all gather around the mic. Or all together. Group. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we'll go through the cue sheet and just record each cue. But so, usually yeah. the group ADR and looping is multiple people having conversations at once or um, a little pocket of people. So if there are two people in the background of one scene, we'll bring out two of the actors and have oh, okay. them have a conversation in front of the mic. Mm -hmm. Or have, if they're in a room, we'll have it spread out so that there's two people here, two people here, two people here surrounding the mic and then having them talk. Say a diner scene and you see a family in the background, would you bring up like the members that represent the family? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then they would be in a pocket and then they would have another person at the table to the left, on the left side. So we'll kind of get a variety of sound um, based off where the mic is. I keep looking up because there's a mic here. <laughs> I realize that and I'm like, oh no, it's not real. But, um, but, but the mic would be in front of you essentially and then you would just kind of space them out so that it sounds like they're coming from different parts. So you're not you're not layering different audio, you're trying to capture like the soundscape, right? Or well, it'll be layered. Um, we'll do right. multiple passes if it's a yeah. large Yeah, and they'll scene. move it, yeah, they'll move it around and have us switch out the position. So and that we'll change can... our voices to sound like different characters mm -hmm. or sound a little bit older, sound a little bit younger, different accents, um, whatever we can do so that it doesn't sound like the same people talking. Do you guys have a way of identifying, so you have a screen in front of you or, yeah. or projection or whatever, how do you identify the person that you're trying to trying to do the ADR for? It'll usually be spotted beforehand. Yeah, um, we'll usually go through that the day before or a couple of days before and identify what we'll go through the entire movie and watch what needs to be covered and what needs to be accounted for in the cue sheet. And then we'll kind of have an idea even in our heads of who we want to assign that to. Uh -huh if we already know who our group is. Mm -hmm. So now, that you, generally you, helps. Do you have the finished audio as well? So you're hearing the, the actual dialogue that's in the scene? It's usually everything has been cut except okay. for um, the background voices. Yeah. Okay. So now the, the obvious question is, how, what do you say in a session like that? Because you're hearing the dialogue, right? From the, the, the original, the, the finished product dialogue. What do you say to not get in the way of that? Well, one of the keys in like what makes a good loop group actor is that you want your whatever you're saying to be obviously on topic to the scene yeah. and in the right oh. tone. Yeah. If we're shooting a period piece, um, then it obviously has to be Yeah, like the if, right you're, period. if you're doing a scene from 1920s Boston, you wanna right. know you wanna know what 1920s Boston dock workers sound like. Uh -huh. So the accents have to be similar. Sometimes there's no accent at all, but, or and the conversation topics have to be relevant. So if you're at a, a you know, a Chinese restaurant, you don't wanna be talking about French food. <laughs> yeah. And the key to it is to make sure that you're staying on topic without being distracting. So obviously you yeah. don't wanna be screaming, oh my God, that man is shot in the yeah. background. Yeah, exactly. It has to be kind of like 
topics that are sentences that wouldn't pop out from yeah. the audio track. So have you ever done a show or and then you watched it back like in the in a theater or whatever or television and like listen for your own voice? Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And you yeah. just uh -huh. get distracted just like, you'll see a person like, walk by and you're like, oh that's me. Yeah, I forget like who like certain characters that I voiced or that somebody else's voice and it's kinda of fun to watch back and mm -hmm. try and identify, try and spot yourself. So mm -hmm. you do you do you do much like lip reading or try to match mm -hmm. to, Yeah. Okay. You do watch lip reading so we're we're trying to figure out what they're saying as accurately as possible. Mm -hmm. especially if you can really see their mouth moving. Sometimes we do cover dialogue that's not, like you don't see their mouth, they're turned around, but you can tell they could be talking. Yeah, so that's when you can be more liberal with what you're improvising. But when you see their mouth moving, you do want to try to get as accurate as possible. Okay. We'll also handle um, efforts, which are um, if you oh, hear yeah. somebody breathing, for example, it yeah, obviously right. isn't a microphone and they're up in their nostrils. So we'll come up to the mic and do... Whatever. Right. Okay. Even add, silent breaths like yeah, that. Yeah, silent breaths if somebody's tiptoeing in a horror film, for example. We'll also do like uh, monster voices or mm -hmm. um, zombie voices. We don't do The Walking Dead, but if, on The Walking Dead, they obviously have the zombies when they come mm -hmm. to life are growling or whatever it is. Um, that's also something that we handle on set. Mm -hmm. So now, do you, do you props ever enter your world, or is that that's no. a complete that's fully yeah, that's something yeah. different? Yeah, we're a separate department than fully. Mm -hmm. I haven't actually come across a fully artist in the same time as the looping session. We're yeah. usually spaced apart. But I would love to see that. Do you guys have a funny story, like something that happened on set or a, a session that mm -hmm. you can tell? We do a lot of it's happening more and more that we have to do orgasms. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I opted out for that yeah. one. Okay. I did not go to that session. He did. Um, he can tell yeah, me this story. Was, we did a large orgy scene and had okay. to do many, many layers of orgasms. And um, yeah, I so was like, about nope. Five minutes. Is that and what then, you call efforts? That's, yeah, that's effort, effort. yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, by the end of it, everyone was pretty lightheaded and just kind of like woozy from doing because it's exhausting. Yeah, I had exhausting a, a friend your book who went to it and she was saying that it was she was beat for the whole day. Oh, yeah, like she was really exhausted because it's yeah. vocally exhausting. I'm okay. assuming to do it. Yeah, you start to get lightheated and actually. Is it because yeah. a lot of lot of airiness in the yeah. voice? Is yeah, it is? okay. <laughs> yeah. Orgasms or monsters or death scenes. Death, yeah, a lot of yeah. Like, if you're seeing a fight scene or a death scene, <laughs> yeah. we're doing the uh, whatever it is or the punches. Yeah. What are you doing for fights? I mean, just like grunts. Is that what Lotta, you're... you want? Usually, you match the. Um, so we'll watch playback of mm -hmm. the actor yeah. um, doing the fight scene, and we'll just kind of trail them slightly. So if they're doing, <coughs> we'll uh -huh. just copy them and do that, <coughs> and just uh, okay. add, just add vocals to. We'll copy their movements and just whatever comes out is yeah. usually going to be right. What I love is that that's a subtlety about that. I mean, you could, yeah. you, sure, you could shoot a film, you could shoot a film and, and show a film without that. Right. But it doesn't have the you don't. It's that subtle, yeah. It's a yeah. touch to it. If it wasn't there, you would notice. That's yeah, the thing about absolutely. group ADR is that when it's not there, you, you feel it. like something's like off in the back mm -hmm. of your head, but you don't know what it is. It's usually there and, is a looping. And, and, and from the indie world, it feels cheap. Yes, yeah. Because yeah. it doesn't have that life Full to it. Full yeah. life, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it definitely adds a lot to the production. Sure. Yeah, even yeah. like dancing, like we've yeah. done shows where like yeah. there's a lot of dancing involved, and we we'll yeah. have to okay. like copy Prom the scenes. ballerinas <laughs> move or the whatever the hip hop dancers move. Yeah, moves exactly. And just add the <laughs> whatever really? it is. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's not even something I would even think about adding to like a dance sequence. Yeah. That's that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. it's very. It's I mean, when you listen back, of. it's played back. It's <laughs> yeah. turned down so low, but you would notice if it wasn't there. Yeah. Part of what I love about um, looping is that. As like a human being going about the world, we're never bored because we're always eavesdropping on conversations. Like right. if you're at an airport, for example, um, we start listening to the PA announcements and just like jotting down whatever they're saying because that might become useful later. Mm -hmm. Or if you're at or, a diner or on the subway, yeah, whatever it is. You've had to um, do like 911 jargon or like stuff yeah. for the police station. That's stuff that you you hear sometimes or, mm -hmm. you know. It's just stuff that like you start to get interested in every, sure. every industry because you just want to know what kind of language they use and like what life is like because then you might have to replicate that in the future. So what kind of skills do you think would make a good, a, a good actor for a loop, for a loop group? Uh, you have to be great at improv. That's mm -hmm. probably and, one yeah. of the bigger ones. And you have to be really interested in doing research because yeah. a lot of people think that it is you know, easy that you just yeah. go out a sound stage and say banana, 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 and just like make right. up conversation. No, yeah. But um, all of the tracks are being listened to, so all the dialogue has to be accurate, as Nina said, for the time period for whatever mm -hmm. the um, 
vocation is of the workers or whatever it is. Yeah. Everything has to fit. Um, so you do have to do a lot of research. Yeah, like for example, I went to, I mean, I had to do a looping job for a movie that took place at Google. And the entire, and all the scenes in the background had a lot of technical jargon that nobody would know normally. So mm -hmm. I had to go and do tons of research on what would be talked about at a place like Google. There was even a scene where there was a Quidditch tournament and I needed okay. to know terminology for Quidditch, like I, I, and that's not common knowledge. Well, I happen to be a Harry Potter fan, so a little <laughs> bit for me. But if it wasn't, you know, if it wasn't me, then it would be something that somebody needed to take time to research. So then, how do you do the research for this? I mean, is it just are you just reading, or what else? We as coordinators um, will spot the film or TV show beforehand, yeah. and then create a document of basically homework to give yeah. to all of our actors. So we'll do a lot of it, <laughs> yeah. but okay. it still means you have to read through it and know it. And What's do it? your own research. So in a, in, in a recording session, uh, besides yourself and the actors, who else is involved with the recording session? The sound supervisor, um, yes. the engineer. Sometimes really, the producer. Sometimes the Kind of depends on who they want to bring in. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, sometimes it can be the directors, the producers, sometimes the writers will come in. It's just kind of It's what whatever the, the level of production is, if yeah. it's like a network TV show versus a low-budget indie film, kind of just mm -hmm. who is available, what yeah. kind of standard procedure so, is. So you brought up, you have network television versus like indie. What's your client range like? What, what, what kind of people do you deal with generally? Well, Looping's involved yeah. in pretty much every genre of TV and film yeah. and mm -hmm. even some video games. So we've Except done, like, for sitcoms, that's the only thing where, I mean, on occasion if a sitcom is being filmed in like a grocery store and uh, yeah, they're being more yeah. like single cam, but a multi-cam is like pretty much the only genre that doesn't use Looping. Mm -hmm. So we've done independent films and we've also done, you know, production company worked with production companies and networks. We've worked with Hulu, NBC, Netflix, um, mm -hmm. Hallmark. So we've worked with a few, and then we've worked with a, a ton of uh, independent films and independent production companies too. So how did you guys get involved with Loop Group? I think um, it was after I I had got I had another actor friend um, refer me to a looping job mm -hmm. um, just because they needed a specific voice, they needed an accent that I could do, and so I went on set to do that. Um, and I got into it and I did it this one time for a feature and after that, I loved it. I mean, it was basically like doing improv uh, on on set but without having to dress up and you yeah. could wear your pajamas to work. <laughs> exactly. So it was kind of nice and, and after I told him about it, then he was super interested because he's a great voiceover artist as well. And it was just kind of like, let's figure out how to do this ourselves. Yeah. So how do you make that leap from like a performer to a coordinator for a loop, for a loop group? Yeah. Well, we still get to perform too. That's kind yeah, of the yeah. fun part. And and we're, since we're actors ourselves, we kind of know the business and know who to contact. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just kind of figuring out. Like the same. Let's yeah. take the next step, right? Yeah, just, yeah. How to take the next step and do it ourselves. We're both kind of like hands on, and, and we like to kind of produce in general. So this is kind of like the producer version mm -hmm. of what being a looper is. You sure. So a uh, question about your training. So what, what, I know you, you talk about training. What kind of training have you guys, did you guys get? Uh, well, for looping, it's a different skill set. Mm -hmm. um, so you, kind of, you do have to be trained before you go on set. OK. Um, because we use an entire different, entirely different set of jargon. Um, there's formations involved mm -hmm. um, and kind of just knowing set etiquette. Yeah. And how to do your research? And specific lingo that you might not be used to. So, like, give me an example. Give me an example. Like, I hear, I hear walla. Yeah, that's the term we heard talked about. What, what's, what, what is walla? So, like, a walla bed would be if you're watching a party scene, um, and everybody is like a high school party scene, and everybody's yeah. chatting in the background, talking over each other. That would be a walla bed. Yeah. Um, basically, just people talking, talking over each other like this and, and keep going, and keep going. Oh my god! Yeah, that was so yeah. fun. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so you actually said training for doing looping specifically. How, where do you get that training? We actually teach we, a workshop. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah. But a work, there are workshops um, in town, in LA at least. Um, yeah. And that's usually the best way to get started. So what's the process? So maybe go to, a, go to a training session, go to the workshops. Then, then what, what's the next step after that? Contacting different looping coordinators and seeing if they can sit in on a session. We've had a lot mm -hmm. of people do that where you can just come in. If you have friends that are producers, if you have friends that are looping themselves or have hiring someone to loop, just ask your friend if you can go in to watch how a session's run because you want to know how it goes mm -hmm. before you try it and say that you're experienced. Also, a lot of actors say that they're experienced at ADR, but what we do is not just ADR. Yeah. Group ADR handles ADR, but ADR is not group ADR mm -hmm. in and of itself. Um, 
So the best way is to get involved and just kind of um, visit sets and see what the yeah. process is. And then if you know a coordinator, reach out to them. This the business is not easy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's it is one where you know you are you're on top of the world for a second, then you're you know then you can't get a job for a <laughs> long time, right? Yeah. Do you have any words of encouragement for how to get through those times? Or part of the that's part of the reason that we started yeah, our I own company. Yeah, I think it's being was... able to pivot because yeah. I think that's like one of the things that I learned about being an actor is I you know I'm still an actress and I, I work like pretty regularly, but. Being able to pivot and figuring out things that you're good at too, like figuring out that we were good at voiceover and looping, and um, we write as well, and we've done kind of a majority of different. We've tried a lot of different things, and that's because we're able to realize that you don't have to just stick with one thing to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. you There's so do. many aspects to the industry. It's kind of nice to be able to go in one direction. Then when that kind of dies out, keep it burning, but then go in mm -hmm. another direction if something yeah, another opportunity. Comes it also up. fuels your creativity. I think it to, does, to not yeah. be constantly. Like, you know, you, to, to keep hitting a wall, okay, let's let's go this direction for a little bit. Exactly. You know, yeah. then right. maybe you'll figure out a way to get around that wall. Yeah. yeah. To it. And it's yeah. nice to have a partner, too, to work with it because mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. if, you know, he's busy on a project and I can't do something, we have the ability to help each other in that respect, too. And I think finding someone that you are, that you can relate to and then it kind of has a similar vision of what they want is definitely helpful. No, I'm going to just throw this out there because, I mean, I, I have a lot of actor friends and, I, and you know, actors... I'm not talking down to you, but um, you, I don't think you, people realize when they go on audition, like if, if, you get re if you get a no, it's not because they didn't like you mm -hmm. or, that's right. or it's just you weren't right f or somebody else was better f a fit for the part than you right. were. Yeah. You know, I think, and I think what's, what actors can kind of benefit, especially nowadays with all the technologies, all, I think it's available, to take on more of a producer role. Yeah. You know? Definitely. I mean, I think we both have been like that since... Um, starting acting, we both just started to do a lot of things on our own and being our own filmmakers and our own writers and producers. And yeah, because doing... if you're just auditioning for other people's projects, yeah. you kind of leave all of the chance up to somebody to... else. Yeah, right. and all your eggs are in one basket. You're just focusing on one thing, and it's going to make you more stressed and probably crazy. <laughs> do, yeah. you're going to do worse at your auditions because you're focused only on that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what's nice about figuring out other things you're good at in the industry because then you can kind of spread yourself a little bit and, and not be so worried about one thing. I would like to thank Anita Kalathar and Wolfie Troush for a fantastic interview. If you want to learn more about them, check out loopgroupwest.com to see their resume and their upcoming workshops. If you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell icon so you get notified of all of our future videos. And consider becoming a patron on Patreon. We post a lot of behind the scenes snippets there and every little bit helps. Well, until next time, I'm John Hess. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at FilmmakerIQ.com.